Hallelujah. James chapter 1 verse 22. Are you there? Amen. Hallelujah. If you're there, hallelujah, I'm going to start my reading. Amen. It's Wednesday night, so I ask you all to read along with me. It says this, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you tonight about the fact that God opens doors for doers. Amen. Hallelujah. God opens doors for doers. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a little further down. It says, hallelujah, for be ye, not, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer, hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, amen, or a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. That's if you're just a hearer. Being a hearer and not a doer is like looking in the mirror, seeing the sleep in your eyes, amen, seeing the crust in the corner of your mouth. You know how it is, first thing in the morning. But then you walk away from the mirror and pretend like none of that was there. That's what it means to be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word because you are aware of the deficiencies. Amen. The word of God shows me what's going on in me. But if I don't do what God tells me to do, it's like God showed me where I needed to make corrections, but I don't change what he showed me. Therefore, I continue in the same sin or the same problem or the same rut or the same pattern and get stuck because I'm not a doer of the word. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, that's the word of God, hallelujah, the perfect law of liberty. Mm, I couldn't get stuck right there, honey bun. It's not a law of bondage. Amen? It's not a book of rules and re regulations of what you can't do and don't do and God's going to get you. No, it's the perfect law of liberty. It's not can'ts and don'ts is you can hallelujah and it's God's will the perfect law of liberty continuing therein he being not a forgetful here but a doer of the work a doer of the word is a doer of the work amen this man shall be blessed in his deed Amen. Hallelujah. The deed is what you're doing. Hallelujah. The blessing is in the doing. God opens doors for the doers. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get into this. Amen. Because I want you to see by the end of this service. Hallelujah. That God blesses those that do. Amen. Hallelujah. God opens doors for doers. Amen. Not for thinkers. For people that just think this will be nice. Amen. Not wishers. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to throw somebody a curve right here. Not even just prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God can open a door for prayers. Amen. Because you pray. But if you just a prayer and not a doer, God can open a door wide open and you not enter in. Why? Because you're not a doer. Amen. Hallelujah. A hearer, but not a doer. Hearing is the root. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But amen, the doing is the fruit. It's the doing that lets you know if you really believe, amen, what you heard or not. Amen. Hallelujah. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 7, it talks about the fact you can know people by their fruit, by what they're Doing. Are you talking about judging people? No, I'm talking about being fruit inspectors. Amen. Hallelujah. You can know, hallelujah, what the root is by the fruit. James said, you say you have faith. I'll show you my faith by my works. You don't have to question and wonder whether or not I believe what I heard. Why? Because I'm not just a hearer. I'm a doer. I'll show you what I believe by what I'm doing. Amen. Hallelujah. The question is, what are we doing? 
Amen? Because God opens doors for doers. What are we doing? Are we doing what the written word says? Amen? I'm going to take you to a few places. Amen? Because this is going to show us, hallelujah, how to enter into open doors of opportunity that God, hallelujah, has opened for you and me. We have to be doers. The doors are open for the doers, people that do what the written word says. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 9 says, Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them. Well, the Bible is simple. <laughs> like I said, sometimes we need a little help to misunderstand it. The Bible is so simple. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all ye do. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 says, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do, to do, to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left that thou mayest Prosper. Are we seeing something here? God prospers. God blesses. God does something if we do something. If we're doers of the word, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Don't stop saying it. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do, to do. To do, God opens doors for the doers. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. The door is open for the doer. And if you do it, he'll prosper. If you do it, you'll have good success. If you do it, you make your way prosperous. Hallelujah. Because you enter into the door of opportunity that God has opened for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you do what the written word of God tells you to do. Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and hallelujah, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, stable, established, firm, fixed, rooted, grounded, hallelujah, stable, that bringeth forth fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. We said that the hearing is the root, but the doing is the fruit. He bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah. God wants to prosper what you do. God wants to open a door for you. Hallelujah. He opens doors for doers. Amen. Hallelujah. If you do what he tells you do, to do in his written word. Are you doing what he tells you do by his spoken word? Amen? Hallelujah. Jaden asked me today, how do you know the voice of God from your own voice in your head versus talk, the devil talking to you? It doesn't agree with what the written word of God says to you. Amen? Hallelujah. And whatever the spoken word of God tells you to do, do it. Hallelujah. Because God is opening a door for you if you are a doer. John's Gospel, chapter 2. You're familiar with the story. The Bible says Jesus went to a wedding in Cana. Amen. And his mother came to him and said, they have no wine. Like many marriages. Amen. They had no wine. Hallelujah. You got to invest. Hallelujah. In growing together so you don't grow apart. That's just a little sidebar. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But the wedding had no wine. And his mother said unto the servants, Whatever he said unto you, do it. Hallelujah. I'm saying unto you, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. God opens doors for doers. Hallelujah. Do what the voice of God tells you to do. 
And what are we doing? Are we doing whatever our hands find to do? If you see something that needs to be done, are you a doer of what you know needs to be done? Amen? We talked about it on Sunday morning, amen, how it's sometimes it's the little things, amen, that make it so it, 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 it prepares you for the big things, amen? And if you're willing to endure the inconveniences and if you're willing to do, amen, the little things, amen, it opens doors for the big things. Are you willing to do the little things that you know need to be done, amen? To show yourself faithful, hallelujah, as a doer. I have you turn here with me, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. I'm still a little bit from Royal's book right here. Royal wrote a book, amen, hallelujah. Be looking for it. I'm not going to tell you the title yet. <laughs> But it's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Men, you want to get this book. It's coming. Amen. Ladies, you want to get this book for your man. Amen. It's coming. Hallelujah. You want to get this book for you so you recognize when he comes. It's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says this. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. Amen. Do it with all thy might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Are you doing what God told you to do? Whether it be what he said in his written word, what he said in his spoken word, or whether it be what you do because you see it needs to be done. Amen? Amen. Amen. The door is open for doers. I'm reminded of Deacon Ed, I'm reminded of the NCO creed where it says, I am a non-commissioned officer. No one is more professional than I. I don't walk past a deficiency. If I see something that needs to be done, amen, I'm going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. And God opens doors for doers. If you're somebody that'll do what he tells you to, hallelujah, he opens doors for you. Amen. 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 What are we doing? I guess the second question is, how do you do what you do? I once heard somebody say, how you do anything is how you do everything. How do you do what you do? We can go right there to what we just read from Ecclesiastes chapter 9. He said, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. How do you do what you do? As somebody that wants God's, God to open a door for you, how do you do what you do? Amen? Do you do it with all your might? Do you do it as unto God? Amen? Hallelujah. What we read before from John's Gospel chapter 2. It says that when Jesus told the men to go fill the water pots, they came back with water pots that were full of 50 gallons of water. And they didn't fill it halfway. They filled it to the brim. Amen. Whatever God tells you to do, do it to the brim. Do it to the overflow. Do it to the best of your ability. Hallelujah. Do it. Hallelujah. With all your might. Because how you do do what you do depends or de determines how the open door works for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God opens the door. But hallelujah, this is a free will relationship. God does not force anybody into an open door. How far you go when God opens the door for you depends on how you do what you do as a doer. Are you diligent? Are you deliberate? Are you disciplined? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you development, developing as you do it to get better and better? How do you do what you do? Do you have a spirit of excellence? Amen. Hallelujah. You should have a spirit of excellence. Amen. Daniel chapter 6. 
Daniel chapter 6 verse 1. It pleased Darius the king to set over the kingdoms 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom. 120 princes over the kingdom and over these three presidents. Over the 120 princes that were placed over the nations. He placed three presidents over the three 120 princes. Of whom Daniel was the first. Mm. So over the nations there was 120 princes. Over the princes there were three presidents. And over the three presidents there was one that, that, that exalted himself. Or should I say promoted himself above the others with how he did what he did. Amen. Hallelujah. For Daniel was the first uh, that the princes might give account unto him, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the princes and the presidents because of an excellent spirit. How do you do what you do? If you want God to open doors for you as a doer, do you do what you do with an excellent spirit? An excellent spirit, amen, where you excel in what you do no matter what it is that you do. Where the little things are big things. Where you focus on the details. Where you're concerned about whether or not it looks right or straight as have done. And you don't want to send out a product or a work it does not represent who you are or who God is. God opens doors for doers. And hallelujah, sometimes what it is that opens the door for the doer is not just what he does, but how he or she does it. Amen? Amen. Doing it to the best of their ability. Doing it to the rim, doing it to the brim, doing it to the overflow, doing it with an excellent spirit, treating the little things like big things. Because the little things could be your next big thing. You never know what's happening in that little opportunity, that little open door, that little thing that you thought was insignificant, but all the while it was God opening a door for somebody who's a doer that will do what he tells them to do and do it to the overflow, do it to the brim, do it, hallelujah, to the best of their ability. We just talked about Daniel, how he had an excellent spirit and it caused him to be promoted. We could talk about how David was over a few sheep but because of how he was able to conduct himself with a few sheep, hallelujah, God gave him a kingdom. How do I do what I do? Joseph was a servant over one house. A slave, then a prisoner, but ended up in a palace. Why? Because he did not overlook the little thing. And he did the little things like they were big things. And had an excellent spirit to do whatever he did well. Amen. So much so that even when he was a slave, the Bible said he was blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. How do I do what I do? Do I do it to the best of my ability? Do I do it? To the overflow, do I do it like God is watching me? Amen. Like God will bless me with an open door of opportunity because he opens doors for doers. Not just what you do, but how do you do what you do? Why do we do what we do? The Bible says man looks on the outside. Mm -hmm. And you can fool people by doing stuff to be seen, to be noticed, to get attention, to get accolades, to get pats on the back. I'm reminded of what the Bible says. There's some folks that 
pray in the streets to be seen with loud, boisterous prayers of vain repetition. The Bible says they got their reward. Folks saw him and said, oh, isn't he holy? <laughs> there are people that fast and draw their cheeks in and they make themselves look like, oh, I've been fasting for the past two hours. And, you know, they want people to see them. <laughs> and that'll impress people. But God, the Bible says, looks on the heart to see why do you do what you do. If you want God to open doors for you, you got to check your heart to see why do I do what I do? Am I doing it just because I want God to bless me? Or am I doing it because, hallelujah, I want to please him? If pleasing him is your objective, hallelujah, satisfying you will never be a problem. Why do I do what I do? Am I doing it just because I want God to open a door for me? Or am I doing it because I want to please the one who created me? Because I love the one who loves me. Why do I do what I do? Hebrews chapter 4, verse, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God sees me and he sees why I do what I do. Why do I do what I do? I do what I do because I love you, Jesus. 